First up, Chaos Papulatus. If you solo Chaos Vellum without worrying about the timer, then there's a good chance you're also ready for CPAP. First, let's cover the things that are present for the entire fight, starting with the hooks on the ceiling. Periodically, the hooks are going to come down from the ceiling, and if they hit you, they're going to grab you and stun you. It's because of these hooks that I prefer to fight Papulatus on the right side of the arena in this opening where there are no hooks. It is worth noting that if you fight Papulatus multiple times in a row without restarting your client, the hooks can kind of bug out a little bit, and they can make the fight a little bit tricky because when they're in these new spots, they can actually grab you. Whether they're glitched or not, you just want to avoid them, and the best way to do that is to lure Papulatus over to the area here. Now, unfortunately, it's not always that easy, so let's pause it here so we can show off two major mechanics. So let's begin with one of the most common, the clock bombs. Currently, they deal 100% damage. Very shortly after this video releases, there should be a patch that reduces it to 70%. Now, mind you, this is coming at the cost of now having a 5-second potion cooldown where previously there was none. You'll also notice the blue glowing death circles. You do not want to be hit by those, they deal 100% damage a tick. You are going to be warned when this attack happens by a message at the top here. That is your cue to get up onto the platforms where it's safe or get ready to stand in the small safe spot in between them, which yes, will sometimes be almost necessary. The reason why it might be necessary is these laser beams. Throughout the entire fight of Papulatus, these laser beams are going to continually spawn in fixed positions. There's nothing random about the way they rotate or where they intersect. That part will always be consistent dependent on what pattern you currently have. The only part that's going to be random here is where the clock bombs are actually spawning, and that's what can make this part tricky, particularly before the 100% HP damage nerf. But let's quickly cover one other important mechanic. Above my head here, you're going to see a timer. The goal here is to pick up these drops from the ads along the map and either divide your number by two or multiply it by two to make it as close to his number as possible. When either of your numbers hit zero, you'll be locked out of skills for as long as the difference between the two numbers was. The resulting debuff also can't be dispelled. However, if you're playing a Dark Sight class, you can actually forego this whole mechanic altogether. All you need to do is make sure you're in dark sight when one of the timers counts down to zero. Now let's go back a little bit to a bad situation. Here you have a laser beam pattern that requires you to be on the ground to block the two lasers. You have the damage fields coming up and you also have a timer ticking on you. While this death could have been avoided just by not standing there that early, it is still dangerous because you need to block the laser but you have very little room to dodge the clock bombs. Post nerf, this won't be nearly as much of a problem. But this is a good reason why you should save iframes if your class is lucky enough to have one. There's also this secondary timer up top, and while it may seem ominous, it's actually quite a nice mechanic. When that timer hits zero, his alarm is going to start ringing. Clocks will rain from the sky that will not one-shot you, they will stun you, you'll be taking a small damage over time, and this is really just a free DPS window where all other mechanics are paused. And finally, let's cover the last mechanic of phase one. Papulatus will retreat into his clock, and you'll see a clock with percentages show up in the middle. These percentages represent healing that Papulatus will receive should they remain on the clock. When pressing up on the blue portal to the left here, you will be removing the highlighted piece of clock, which you can actually do without standing on the platform just by jumping and pressing up. And do try to do your best to avoid actually getting grabbed by the hooks because they will slow you down. When you get down towards the end of the clock, you're presented with a choice. You can either get rid of the 0% that's there right now and resume the fight immediately, or you can just kind of chill and give your cooldowns time to come back. So eventually you're going to get to phase two, and if you've made it to phase two, you've pretty much won the fight because phase two, he just kind of flies around, he loses a lot of his most dangerous mechanics, and you really just have to worry about the laser, which does still suck, you can get yourself killed by it. There's just not gonna be as many obstacles stopping you from blocking it. You will notice that he does summon some clones of himself. These are rather fragile, they're easy to kill, and you do want to because if you leave them alive, it can heal him up health. But again, this phase isn't that threatening. He might teleport you around randomly sometimes, but it's not that difficult and he has really low HP. If you made it here, there's a good chance you are going to win the fight. Okay, Akechi barely needs a guide, but I figure for the sake of being thorough, I should mention a couple things. Akechi can be a very annoying fight for a very select few classes. He tends to punish low sustained DPS and low mobility classes that have trouble weaving in and actually doing a meaningful amount of damage. Now, the reason for this is because if you don't do enough damage to consistently, Akechi triggers a mechanic. When this happens, you're taken to basically another realm where you're going to be constantly barraged by attacks of a clone of Akechi. Every time you get hit by one of these clones, you're going to be significantly slowed and that's just going to make getting hit by even more of them even easier. You'll get stacked up by many debuffs and potentially even get to 30 stacks, which in that case, you are one shot killed. Akechi does also have a damage reflect, but this is a soft damage reflect, meaning it's not going to kill you if you hit it. You're just going to damage yourself, but it is still going to slow you down. He also 
also has an interesting mechanic where if you bind him after the bind ends, he's going to bind you back. On top of that, he's also going to put his reflect on because he's an asshole. Aside from all that, when you're in phase two, you just need to watch out for this attack where he sends several clones of himself out forward. If you get hit by that, you are going to get one shot. Or if you're some tankier class, you might not get one shot, but you will get many stacks, which could trigger the one shot like you saw here. Akechi is more just about meeting damage thresholds and being patient because he's going to CC you a lot, knock you up in the air, knock you around, bind you back when you bind him, and just put up a damage reflect that makes you have to sit around and do nothing for a little bit. All things considered, he's a very easy fight, and if you can do the previous bosses, you can easily do Akechi. Actually, you could do Akechi before Papulatus, but this is the way I did it, so. Next up is Golix, one of the most important bosses in GMS. To enter the Hell difficulty version of Golix, you're either going to need the key to enter, or you can go through the regular way. The regular way is simple. Immediately upon spawning, you'd run to the right, run up here, go into the portal. From here on out, it's a rather linear path. You just need to kill some mobs to progress to the limbs, and when you can, you walk into the heart here, and now you are at the Helix fight. Helix is going to have a few threatening attacks, most notably the hand here. If you are under it when it makes contact with the ground, you are dead. The arena is split in two right down the middle, which you can see represented in the ground at the bottom. Golix will always try to face the direction you are on and aim his breath attacks accordingly. His dark purple breath is not very threatening. However, this pink breath attack that he has, this is the dangerous mechanic. If you get hit by it, the first hit will kind of seduce you and make you start walking towards the middle, and if you reach him, you're going to be instantly killed and heal Golix for some of his health. What's even more dangerous about it is it actually has a small hitbox behind his face too, unlike the purple breath. These kind of healing mechanics, they can be very demoralizing during a boss fight, so it's just important to just relax, take a breath, stay dead for a moment, and come back and try not to chain death in Golix, because that's very easy to do. And the last mechanic from phase one that is going to be present for the entire boss fight is these ads that spawn from the left and right and try to come into the center. If they reach the center, they inflict a debuff on you that stacks up to 5. Should the debuff stack up to 5, you are instantly killed. And as I said, this is persistent throughout the entire fight, every phase. The moment you deplete his red health bar, phase 2 is going to begin, and I encourage you to get some distance as soon as possible when you do this. Preferably even a little bit before, because you never know when he's going to immediately do one of his new attacks. The new attacks such as this explosion you can see here, they aren't the threatening part, but if you are within range of him, which is to the left of this portal here, you can be inflicted with a debuff like you see here, which will reverse your controls. Now that on its own can be very dangerous, but what's really threatening about it is the explosion here at the end of it. I iframed it there, but if you don't iframe it, you're going to be hit for a lot of damage, which can easily get you killed with the long potion cooldown, and it's going to stun you, which is very likely to get you killed by follow-up attacks. Now once again, it's extremely easy to stand behind these portals and outrange it, but the threatening part comes when you're coming down here to clear ads, you are very prone to getting hit by it, so you need to carefully time when you come down, making sure it's probably just after he did an attack, that way you have a less of a chance of immediately getting hit by it. Keeping the adds in check and making sure to not stack the debuff is going to be the most challenging part of the Golix fight as a whole, particularly in phase two. If you're a class such as the Shadower that I'm playing, you have a summon and you can put it down on the bottom and that will actually take care of the adds for you. I'm not doing it in this video because I want to actually showcase following the mechanics. It's just something you need to be aware of. If you have a summon or a deployable, something that you can put down there to take care of the adds for you, this fight becomes a lot more manageable. Summons aren't the only way to partially cheese this boss fight. I would say taunts actually have even better. You put your taunt on the opposite side that you're standing on and Golix is just going to focus that the entire time making it a very easy fight. Things that can hit the bottom platform when you're up top also make the fight a lot easier as you can manage the adds without having to go down bottom. And one thing that any class should be doing, especially during any boss fight, is making sure you have any mobility skills, no matter how insignificant you may think they are, on your hotkeys at all times. These kind of skills are going to help you immensely in dodging Golix's mechanics. But not just Golix, they're going to help you in other bosses as well, especially ones like Hard Lotus when it comes time to do that later. Flash Jump can be a little bit of a liability, sometimes it puts you up a little bit too high, sometimes it takes you a little bit too far. Things like Rush mechanics are very nice for bossing, and really there's just not really any reason you shouldn't have it on your bar, anyone can really fit them. In any case, these later bosses are going to be split up a little bit more than the earlier bosses that I did. One, their mechanics are a little bit more in depth, and I would like them to be a little bit easier to find for people who are just looking for specific bosses that are known to be a little bit challenging to do. So if you're looking to learn Damien, Lotus, or Guardian Angel Slime on all of their difficulties, that will be coming shortly. So thank you to my members and my patrons, as always, for supporting me. Thank you to you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.